So you want to spice up your Thanksgiving dinner? Well, you have come to the right place. Today, we will be using the Xtool F1 Ultra to create five cool projects. Let's get started. First up, we will be making some wooden napkin rings. We will start simple with this first project. This is a set of five napkin ring holders with engraved words on each one and cut to place a napkin in the middle. For the material, we will be using Xtool's 3mm base wood. For the engraving, we will be using the blue light laser, power set to 90%, speed set to 800 and lines per centimeter set to 100. For the cut settings, we have the power set to 100%, speed set to 7 millimeters per second and one pass. Oftentimes, you may get scorching around the cut lines when cutting or engraving wood. So a helpful tip is to apply some blue masking tape to the top of your board. You can also purchase some laser-specific masking online. Not all plywood is created equal, so you may have to adjust your cut or engraving settings to get the look you're going for. As you can see from this engraving and cutting, some woods will cause flare-ups to happen. So while this is engraving, it is time to talk about laser safety. It is highly recommended that you do not leave your laser unattended while it is engraving or cutting. Things can go bad very quickly with some materials, so you always need to be there just in case it does. Galvo lasers don't typically have air assist, so oftentimes you will see scorch marks like this. Later on in the video, we will cover masking, and you will be able to see the difference between the engravings. Next up, we have a creative use for some metal business cards. The Xtool F1 Ultra is a very capable machine and can cut directly through metal business cards. So we wanted to create our first project to demo this. Let's go over what you can expect when you download this project. We created a rectangle that will have the output turned off by default. This is to make sure it isn't engraved by accident. The purpose of this shape is to help you align your design perfectly with your business card. Enable it, and then hit framing to position it, and don't forget to use your cutting plate to protect your Ultra's base. Great, now with that centered, we can now disable that layer. Next, our design is set to engraving. Quickly going over the settings, we will use the fiber laser, power set to 100%, speed set to 1500, and lines per centimeter set to 300. Next, we have a text field added that is completely customizable. So from here, you can update it to the name that you want to engrave and also change the font. For the settings, we have the name set to the same ones as the pumpkin. Finally, we have the exciting part. We will be cutting 0.4 millimeter business cards to make our placeholder cards more substantial. Again, we will be using the fiber laser, power set to 100%, speed set to 100, and passes set to 30. This is a great starting point, but if you are using thinner cards, you will just need to reduce the passes. Also, applying too much heat to some cards may cause warping, so another tip is to reduce the power and increase the passes if that is happening to you. Okay, great. That all looks good. Let's hit go to process and we will see that this takes just under a minute and a half. To the laser. These are really fun to make, but here are some tips. We have noticed a big difference in cutting ability if your laser is not focused just right. So if you have issues getting the card to cut all the way through, raise or lower your module a bit and try again. Also, sometimes it may seem like the laser didn't go all the way through, but we believe this is because the metal partially fuses back together, so you may just need to break it free. If all else fails, you can also increase the amount of passes to make it easier. We did not speed up these card clips because we wanted to show you the engraving and cutting in real time. You may also see the card warping and even snapping at some points. There are tools that allow you to tighten down the card flat so that doesn't happen but we find that doing faster passes helps reduce those issues. With thinner cards, the laser will cut right through, but these thicker cards can sometimes take a bit more persuading. For those who want to create their own designs, we have also included a blank rectangle for the cut. This way, you can add your own designs and merge them. We haven't found an easy way to create cut lines like this that leave part of the card still attached using XCS, so we created this in Adobe Illustrator. But if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations on how to do this in Xtool software for others, let them know in the comments. Now let's make some coasters to protect our tables from our beverages. 
For these coasters, we will be using Xtool's AI generating feature. We are presented with a ton of different options, including vector generation. We will be using that in our next project. For now, we want a pumpkin themed image with the word Thanksgiving in it. So we can select this option that allows you to type in a word and it will create a design around that. We will type in pumpkin with maple leaves. Now we can add Thanksgiving in the text box below. Hit generate and voila, we have a cool image that we can engrave onto Slate. Now we can select the image that we like the most and click import to XCS. This is a bitmap image which you can go ahead and engrave right away. However, we find it easier to work with vector images. XCS has a trace option that will allow us to convert it. We select the image, select trace in the top toolbar. From here, we want to uncheck layering by color. That will leave us with the original image and the vector. We will delete the original image. Now we have a design with a box around it. If we double click on the vector, we will be able to delete those points and clean up any other parts of the image to make it exactly how we want it. Awesome, now we can resize it and add our settings. We will use the blue light, power set to 100%, speed set to 2000 and lines per centimeter set to 240. Just wanted to give everyone a heads up, we totally forgot to put down the shield, so there will be some flashing light, sorry about that. On a side note, if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time to do so. Our community is growing and we would love for you to be a part of it. Don't forget to like the video and leave a comment about your favorite Velf Creations project. We would love to hear from you. Now that is a good looking slate coaster. Next, we have some appetizers, but we don't have a place to put them. Let's fix that. We will have a matching slate board to go along with our coaster. This time, we will use the vector generation of XCS to make the process even easier. Once again, we will type in pumpkin and maple leaves. Hit generate, and now we have a matching design that we can import into XCS. Now, there are a few minor things that we need to clean up here. Since this is already a vector we do not have to trace it, we can just double click on it and remove the parts we don't want. Great! We want this to go into the corner of our slate cutting board, so we will add two rectangles to the work area. One vertical and one horizontal. Then we can select the rectangles and our design, head up top and select the subtract option. This will create a nice sharp corner to the image. For settings we will go with the same ones we had for our coasters. If you want to try one of these projects, we will have our Design Find profile linked in the video description. All designs and settings will be included, but you may need to do some changes to the settings depending on what material you are using. The most consistent material in this video is probably the slate, and you should get perfect results every time. Finally, let's make a dual-purpose project that can be used for decoration or as a dish holder. This project is pretty similar to our other wooden napkin rings, but this time, the settings will be a bit different because we will be adding masking tape to this sign. Oftentimes, we get asked why we put masking tape on our wood projects. We prefer masking tape because it gives us a really nice clean result with no scorching. For the engrave settings, we will set the power at 100%, speed still set to 800 millimeters per second. We will increase the lines per centimeter to 300. For the cut settings, we will leave it at 100%, speed 7. Let's send it. For this project, we ended up actually doing a second pass because we totally forgot to focus to the top of our plywood. So here is a tip, don't forget to focus. The masking tape is doing a great job here. For this project, we also wanted to try out some painting, which is completely optional. We figured since we already have the masking tape down, we can add some black acrylic paint. So we dabbed that on gently so we wouldn't remove any of the tape. Then we gave it some time to dry before pulling off the tape. As you can see, the cut lines are much cleaner than the napkin rings. Unfortunately, our painting skills aren't quite there yet, and some of the paint made its way through underneath the tape. Well, you know how to fix a bad paint job? That's right, you make it look rustic. We diluted some acrylic paint with water and rubbed it onto the wood, giving it more of a rustic weathered look. We think that turned out pretty good if we do say so ourselves. But let us know in the comments, what would you have done differently? All right. 
Now with our projects done, it is time to set the table. We would like to thank each and every one of you for watching. We had a lot of fun creating these projects. And just a reminder, we will have a link to our Design Find profile where you can get all of these projects and try them out yourselves. All settings and SVGs for the files we created will be included. Let us know below what projects you would like to see us do in the future. We have a lot of fun videos coming soon with lasers, 3D printers, sublimation, and more so subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and stay creative.